I, I guess that's a good question. It depends. It's been good in one way that the price has been higher for some time. Not of the whole year, but the price has definitely risen until the last two or three weeks. But the reason was that production has been very badly hit by El Nino, which I think you are all familiar with, the long dry spell which came earlier, which has a big impact on the trees. So output down, but price up. Another very good question. The, uh, I think ever since biofuel, biodiesel really became a big factor, which is more or less for the last 10 years, the price of vegetable oils and especially palm oil has had as a flaw the price of crude oil. When the two are the same, you can make palm oil into biodiesel and it will compete very effectively without subsidy with diesel. So that becomes the flaw to the market. So crude oil is very important. The latest announcement from OPEC has raised the price, though I see the last one or two days the price has come down a bit. <coughs> I think the problem with OPEC is they make many promises and they don't deliver. And already it looks as if the market is starting to be skeptical. The other factor is there is a new player in the last just three, four years in the crude oil market, which is shale oil from fracking in United States. These are people who have little rigs that move around. They drill quite quickly for oil, and then they move on to the next spot, maybe nearby. The costs of fracking have come down a lot. And once the price of crude oil goes to $45, $50, these new producers are able to make money and they come back into production. And the evidence is that with prices where they are right now, and when I'm speaking to you, the price in the US is about $51 today. With those prices, you will start to see increased production in US. So overall, I believe the world petroleum market will be in surplus for the next year still. That's what people, the big international agencies expect because they are doubtful about OPEC delivering on its commitment. And so I think the price will come back. My own expectation is more like $45 a barrel as a more normal price today. Well, the price of crude oil, petroleum today, is much lower than it has been. And this affects things that are called synthetic alcohols. When you make detergents, you can either make them from palm products, a lot of it comes from palm kernel oil, or you make it from petroleum. Today, the petroleum products are much cheaper than the natural products to make. So, there is a challenge today for palm-based oleochemicals that they are finding they are in some ways losing markets now to the petroleum products. So eventually I think what will happen, especially for palm kernel oil, which people don't talk about so much, the price of palm kernel oil is much higher than the price of uh, crude palm oil today because it has been hit by drought and its only competitor is coconut oil, which has also been hit by El Nino. So supply is limited, and so the price has gone very high. I expect when palm production recovers, palm kernel supply will increase, and so the price of palm kernel oil will come down. And one of the benefits is that instead of losing markets to petroleum products, again, the palm products will be able to compete. So at least they will protect the markets they have. Today, they are losing markets. The Indonesians, like you, have a system of export taxes. And the system of export taxes tends, it's not always true, 
tends to favor not just refiners, but Indonesian biodiesel producers, oleochemical companies, compared with Malaysian. Actually, for some recent months, for a special reason, your export taxes are fixed in ringgit, theirs are fixed in dollars. The ringgit has been weak. So actually, for some recent months, Malaysian refiners have been more competitive than Indonesian. But at the time we are speaking now, in October, Indonesia is becoming more competitive again. But it's not always true that they are more competitive for refined products. What is normally true is they are more competitive because of export taxes in biodiesel and in oleochemicals. And that is why when people talk of the CPOPC, which is the council to bring together Malaysia and Indonesia, when they discuss that, one of the objectives I know is to try to harmonize the export tax system. And that is, if it can be achieved, I don't think it'll be easy to achieve for various reasons, but if you can achieve it, then that kind of competition for processing, for value addition, can at least be made on a level playing field. The journey, well, when you think of how this has become, I think last year you earned more foreign exchange from the palm sector in export than you did from petroleum products. So it is now the number one single product sector. So any journey where an industry goes from zero to being the biggest generator of foreign exchange biggest generator of employment and starting developing all kinds of value added and you travel in Malaysia and housing and everything, you can see that Palm has been a major engine of your economic growth. So since you are from the Palm industry, you can be very proud, I'm sure, about what has been achieved.